The battle for survival continues as our heroes square off against Hearts, Kami Orin, and Merge Zamasu in Universe 7, with the Universal Seed now having to fuel the energy of Kami Orin, Hearts, and many of the individuals that are going against Goku and his friends, Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, Android 17, and Piccolo now are left with no other choice than to further engage the Universal Seed, however, Kami Orin had now discovered a new evolution that places him above our heroes in strength, as I do want to welcome you all to my Super Dragon Ball Heroes Anime Episode 14 review, two in which we draw ever so closer towards the finale of the Universal Conflict arc, and finally having to see the return of Ultra Instinct Goku within the show itself. Now, I will say, having the events of Hearts coming to Earth and bringing Zamasu and Kami Orin were ultimately a good idea, however, I'm still a little upset at the fact that Cumber is nowhere to be found, even though I do believe that Cumber would have been a great addition to Hearts' team, especially now on Earth. Given the circumstance though, I do believe that it is necessary to give other people some airtime, and of course Hearts and Giant Kami Orin were definitely one of those focus points of this episode, two in which again, if of course you guys are new to this channel, smash that subscribe button, give this video a big fat like if you guys are stoked, ready, and excited for more awesome Super Dragon Ball Heroes content now. From the beginning, we have Goku stare down against Hearts, which I will say, the art, the animation, and the fluidity, in my opinion, were just a tad bit better in the opening of this episode in comparison to what we saw for episode 13 and what I also really enjoyed was seeing the fact that Hearts was bodying Super Saiyan Blue which I think should have happened from the get-go because the way Super Saiyan Blue had been treated by opponents such as Jiren and Merge Zamasu prior it made sense for someone like Hearts to one-shot Goku into the ground which he ended up doing which I really did enjoy because Hearts managed to manipulate those little cubes on his hand and he he smashed Goku into the dirt, which I will say, the way the fluidity of this episode was, really made this little engagement that much more enjoyable, but on the other side of the city, we still have Kami Orin in action against Seventeen and Piccolo, which again, I think that the duo between Seventeen and Piccolo really do stick well, especially Seventeen. Seventeen needs to be used in Dragon Ball Super a lot more often because when we saw him basically emerge with his energy shield and his barrier and he was protecting Piccolo, it really goes as far as to show that Seventeen is such a great supportive character and with Kami Orin having to laugh and mock Piccolo and Seventeen, that is until Seventeen took it upon himself to take action and attack Kami Orin. So anytime Seventeen I think is involved in a fight, it's really enjoyable and seeing the way Seventeen just swooped on in and attacked Kami Orin I think was very good, but Kami Orin just instantly one-shotted him, which is kind of weird because as soon as Kami Orin kicks Seventeen away, Piccolo fires the special beam cannon again, followed by Seventeen's rapid attacks. So they're shooting this individual and Kami Orin is getting blasted left and right, so they have him trapped. They have him trapped in some sort of a synchronized like key blast attack to where he can't escape, but then his skin begins to crack, which was really weird, but it ultimately did make sense, especially with Hearts having to manipulate the energy cubes on the actual Universal Seed itself, and having that energy be fueled into Kami Orin, I think, was very intriguing to me because the minute we saw Hearts condense the Universal Seed and then take that actual seed and plant it within Kami Orin, I thought was really, really smart because remember, they've been gathering all of this energy, they've been gathering Universal Energy from different parts of the Universe itself, Universe 11, Universe 3, and all of this energy was now in embedded within Kami Orin. And I love how Kami Orin at first didn't accept this energy because he kept scratching his chest and then finally we saw him evolve into this giant monster which personally reminded me of Aniraza, right? Through this, Vegeta and Trunks momentarily paused their fight against Merge Zamasu just to oversee what was happening in the city. So while Goku was down in a crater being pressed down by hearts, out in the distance we saw this purple black energy just engulf the entire city and then finally we have the birth of a giant Kami Orin which again reminded me personally of Aniraza except without the flaw of the energy generator on his forehead. So, one of the main reasons why he became the way he was was because of the actual Universal Seed itself. So, I loved how Hearts basically 
you know, acknowledged this and he loved the fact that, you know, they have a very powerful ally now, but at the same time, a lot of people originally assumed that, you know, Cami Orn was going to fuse with somebody. No, as a matter of fact, the way he is now is all because of the Universal Seed itself. So, the minute they start attacking him, it was a little weird at first because they obviously knew that they needed to stop him immediately before he destroyed the entire city and then further the entire planet. But the minute Cami Orn engaged his attacks, the first thing he ended up doing was targeting Piccolo and 17. And as an end result of him having to pursue them with his blast, he wiped out the whole city. So that's a good thing because we need more villains to be villainous, right? We need villains to destroy cities. We need more villains to take action in wiping out other life. But with Vegeta and Trunks having to pursue Kami Orin, what I didn't like is how Zamasu just simply stood there and laughed it off, right? If I was, you know, working alongside these villains, I would make sure that Vegeta and Trunks did not help Seventeen and Piccolo in this fight, but instead, I would rather let them perish. So, with Trunks and Vegeta having to quickly go in there, after Piccolo and Seventeen basically got one-shotted, they stood back up and now we have four on one. So again, this reminded me so much of the Ani Raza fight because you know at some point there's bound to be some hacks and Vegeta took it upon himself right to swoop on in and he kicked you know Kami Orin in the face which I really found to be like a lull moment and then Piccolo did the exact same thing right they kicked him in the face and Kami Orin got really pissed and then they all started blasting him which I thought again from the beginning this reminded me so much of the Ani Raza fight because ironically enough the same time this episode came out is when the dub dropped their episode for Ani Raza versus Universe 7 English dub so I've, I found that to be a little a little too much of a coincidence but we see how Kami Orin just blasts everyone into an oblivion so we know that he's powerful right we know that 17 super saiyan blue assuming evolution none of these you know characters can do anything to stop him right so through the debris and rubble we notice how vegeta powers back down so he went from super saiyan blue assuming evolution back down to base trunks went from super saiyan back down to base and kami Orin is still bringing the fight to our characters but as soon as he was gonna punch vegeta into an oblivion goku shows up and of course due to plot he quickly stops the punch but then gets flicked away so that was pretty cool again I enjoyed this episode from an artistic standpoint, from a animation standpoint, a lot more than the previous episode. So, in traditional Ozaru fashion, we notice how Kami Orin grabbed Goku, right? And he started squeezing him in between his hand, but not before Goku finally unveils Ultra Instinct again. And the way this happened was so quick, because it kind of goes as far as to tell you that Goku now can subconsciously or maybe consciously for that matter tap into ultra instinct right so by the end of this episode we have autonomous ultra instinct and then finally when goku opens his eyes the episode then ends with ultra instinct omen goku having to stare kami Orin off which we already know that ui omen goku is more than likely going to body this individual which again is a tad bit predictable i still think that they should have included cumber in this because cumber is more or less of an unstable person he has no rationality he has no means of stopping anything so in this particular fight it would have been good to see him there even though right now in the manga it is implied that he had went back to his experiment so he is being experimented on currently by few so that's most interesting to see but in this fight going forward for super dragon ball heroes anime episode 15 we are going to get Kami Orin versus Ultra Instinct Goku prior to having merge Zamasu or Hearts do anything in this fight. So they are saving Zamasu and they are saving Hearts. But again, I enjoyed this a lot more than last week's episode because I felt like everything was very fluid, even though it really sucks that these episodes are so short. I enjoyed the episode for what it was, but I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on Giant Kami Orin? What are your thoughts on the plot wink for Goku and Goku having to now go UI? and being able to go into this fight against Kami Orin, we already know that Goku's gonna probably body with complete ease, but I wanna get your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. Once more, if you guys are stoked, ready, and excited for more awesome Dragon Ball content, give this video a big fat like, hit that subscribe button, guys, tune back in for the next video, and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody.
Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead. <laughs> oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zabon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Breezer. Uh-oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs>